In our original filament feeding guide, we showed what happens when the filament feeds perfectly the first time. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. So in this video, we're going to show you some basic troubleshooting steps and uh, some things to avoid so you can make sure that your filament feeds perfectly all the time. Once again, the hot end is up to temperature and I have the zip tie clipped for easier access. So to begin with, one of the major issues when feeding filament is if the filament misses the bottom filament guide path. So inside of the filament drive, you actually have a path that goes down through here, then the filament is squeezed between the drive gear and the idler, down through another section of the printed filament drive, and then into the V3. If the filament misses this bottom path by either curving around the drive gear, curving around the idler, or just going forward or back inside of the filament drive, it can cause all sorts of troubles, including filament jamming. So the basic step when you're having that sort of issue is to extrude some filament to actually experience the issue. And if your extruder starts to make any clunking sounds, skipping, jumping, uh, any sort of issue that is showing that the filament is not feeding out through the bottom, then you should retract the filament. Cut a new tip on the filament, preferably at a 90 degree angle. And then try feeding the filament again. Oftentimes if the filament has a curve in it, or a slight tip, it can get caught in the filament drive more easily. Some other examples of tips that can cause you trouble like that. A few other issues that can cause feeding problems include the idler being too loose or too tight. Too loose and the filament will have too much space inside of the filament drive, so we'll have space where it can avoid the filament path and get jammed inside. If the idler is too tight, the filament will not be able to actually compress enough to get past the drive gear and idler. A couple other possible, that, though very unlikely, situations for the filament misfeeding is if the V3 the black piece here has actually shifted inside of the filament draft. So this piece is a press fit into the filament draft. While the press fit is quite tight, over time there is a chance that it might loosen up so the V3 will be able to shift inside. If you can grab this while it's cold, obviously I'm not going to now, and move it at all inside of the filament draft, that means that it's a bit too loose and might cause you feed issues. Another possibility, though again very unlikely, is the motor itself to have some sort of issue. So, I'm going to show you the diagnostic steps for that real quick. We're going to retract the filament. Take our 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, unplug the fans, loosen the bolt holding the 40 millimeter fan onto the filament drive. And then remove these two screws. Now this hot end is still hot. If you don't feel safe doing this with the hot end hot, you can do it while it's cold as well. The one note for the next step, if you do wish to perform this test while the hot end is cold, you will need to send a custom G-code command, which I'll show you in a moment. So we're going to remove the filament wrap. Hold it in a safe location. And then observe as the hot extruder motor moves forward and back. We should also look at the drive gear and make sure that it cannot rotate freely of the drive shaft. 
one other final test before I show you the cold motion is with the motors disabled to turn the extruder through several flow rotations. Looking for the extruder to turn relatively smoothly, there is a bit of resistance, but you shouldn't feel any grittiness, sandiness, clicking, clunking, or any, anything else that you know, leads you to think that might be an issue. Now, if your hot end is cold, you can control the extruder motor by sending the G-code command M302. This will disable the cold extrusion prevention in the firmware, letting you turn, letting you run the extruder motor forward and back with the hot end being cold. So these have been a couple quick steps for diagnosing and addressing filament feeding issues. Hopefully, if you're having any sort of issue, these will help you get started.